Uh, lay boards of trustees. I'm all for lay leadership of Catholic institutions. I think it's a great development in the church, but what happened is in the late 60s, early 70s, when you hear such a thing as a Jesuit institution or a Benedictine institution in terms of Catholic higher education, uh, it, it almost never means that these institutions are still owned by the original uh, religious orders that founded them. Uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, almost every Catholic college and university in the United States transferred ownership to lay boards of trustees. And in the past few decades, many of these trustees have been brought on again with no sense of upholding the Catholic identity of the institution. Very often these are non-Catholics who aren't aware of the issues. Uh, and, and so we've had difficulties there. The theological descent in Catholic colleges and universities. Uh, since, the, since Vatican II, the church has, had, uh, has wrestled with much of this, especially with regard to sexual ethics issues, and much of that descent has actually been generated on the intellectual level by professors at Catholic colleges and universities. And finally, the total collapse of campus life. Um, this has happened across American higher education generally. It happened because of uh, an abandonment of the sense of in loco parentis, which was the overriding philosophy that colleges were responsible for the, the, the social and the spiritual and moral development of students outside the classroom as well as inside the classroom. And that has completely been abandoned throughout higher education and at most, uh, institution, most Catholic institutions of higher education. To the point where I usually say, instead of uh, in loco parentis, it's now living the vida loca. Um, so what's the point? What's the point of a Catholic college and university? Why do we have that? Uh, if the student behavior and the campus life are, are similar in most respects to what we find in other institutions, if students are being pulled away from the faith rather than toward it, and if the coursework and the knowledge that's gained upon graduation is similar to what one gets elsewhere. Uh, adding to the, or complicating this, is the cost. Again, the state universities have such great resources and increasingly better academic programs. Why not send your son or daughter to a state institution? Uh, civic responsibility. Colleges and universities help uh, develop the leaders that we need in business, medicine, law, uh, politics, uh, uh, and, and that's considered to be a you know, benefit of higher education. Is that not better as a state function? Why Catholic institutions? Um, democratization, uh, exposing uh, different demographic groups, whether ethnically or, uh, or economically, to, uh, you know, to have the ability, the option of higher education, certainly been a major effort in the United States. Uh, but again, <coughs> Non-Catholic institutions, no matter how hard Catholic universities try to uh, provide a, a diverse student population, most other institutions tend to be more diverse and certainly less costly. And finally, Catholic spirituality. I, I think that would be the predominant reason that parents would say, okay, I want my son or daughter to go to a Catholic institution. But uh, many uh, state and secular institutions have very good Newman centers that provide much of the spiritual uh, emphasis that students need. They provide good liturgy and, and the, uh, the spiritual guidance. So again, is it necessary that we have a Catholic college and university? Well, in fact, the answers to these questions have been around for more than 150 years. It was 1852 when John Henry Newman delivered a series of lectures upon the founding of the Catholic University of Ireland. And those lectures were later compiled into one of the most celebrated works in Western culture, and I would argue one of the most widely misunderstood, the idea of a university. I say misunderstood uh, as a gentle term, perhaps in many cases deliberately distorted, because Newman is widely read and perceived in university circles today to be a champion of the liberal arts as it is commonly defined today and as it is studied in both secular and religious institutions. And he's considered to be largely irrelevant to matters of students' social, moral, and spiritual development both inside and outside the classroom. In fact, I intend briefly to make the following five arguments, which are really uh, contrary to some of the assumptions about Newman, but are really not so difficult to make, drawing upon, uh, directly upon Newman's writings. First, 
that Newman's idea of a university cannot be adequately accommodated to the secular institution, which, in fact, Newman regarded to be something other than a true university. Second, that the fact of a secular or even a Catholic university's allowance for the study of religion and divine revelation comes closer but still does not by itself fulfill Newman's definition of a university. Third, that Newman's embrace of the liberal arts is quite different from what is today valued as a liberal arts core or program, at least in its most common form. Fourth, that the contemporary university's negligence with regard to students' social, moral, and spiritual development is entirely opposite to what Newman intended, and in fact corrupts the integrity of the university and produces results which Newman would have abhorred. Fifth, that Newman greatly favored intellectually qualified laymen for faculty positions, but not professors who would undermine the university's commitment to Catholic teaching. Okay, back to my first argument. The Newman's idea of the university cannot be adequately accommodated to the secular institution. The Catholic University of Ireland, which Newman uh, was selected to lead, was a direct response to the Irish government's decision to establish three Queen's colleges across Ireland that were entirely secular and would be joined into a single university. It was very controversial at the time in a highly Catholic country. Many of the arguments for today's secular universities were made then, that, that it was necessary to serve an increasingly diverse population of both Protestants and Catholics in Ireland, and that a secular university would be able to provide an equal education, equal in quality, but just without religion, which was increasingly viewed as a private affair and not the stuff of serious education. Newman would have none of that. He called the secular university, quote, an intellectual absurdity, and he laid down the following syllogism, quote, a university I should lay down by its very name professes to teach universal knowledge. Theology is surely a branch of knowledge. How then is it possible for it to profess all branches of knowledge and yet to exclude from the subjects of its teaching one which, to say the least, is as important and as large as any of them. He went on to write, if in a certain university, so-called, the subject of religion is excluded, one of two conclusions is inevitable. Either, on the one hand, that the province of religion is very barren of any real knowledge, or, on the other hand, that in such university, one special and important branch of knowledge is omitted. Thus we come to understand what Newman posits in the open sen opening sentences of his preface to the idea of a university, that while the definition of a university as a place of teaching universal knowledge does not immediately suggest to the secular mind a moral purpose, or even the consideration of moral truths and divine revelation, Newman explains, quote, such is a university in its essence, and independently of its relation to the church. But practically speaking, it cannot fulfill its object duly, such as I have described it, without the church's assistance. Or, to use a theological term, the church is necessary for its integrity. Consider this from a historical perspective. There's nothing about the essence of a university that defines it as an explicitly Christian apostolate, such that a school of universal knowledge could not have been possible in pre-Christian times. But today, the divine revelation of the Judeo-Christian tradition is essential truth, which cannot be simply discarded by an authentic university. Therefore, Newman goes so far as to argue that secular university, quote, cannot be what it professes if there be a God. I do not wish to declaim, but by the very force of the terms, it is very plain that a divine being and a university so circumstanced cannot coexist. 